Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Mirka Barua-Severa and I'm very happy to be here tonight. Um, I'm a photographer based in Amsterdam. I'm originally from Germany, South Germany, as you might hear my accent. And tonight I would like to show you a recent project that I created for a SAT magazine. But first, uh, I would like to give you a small insight into the process of my image creation so that you understand a bit the way how I work. So I do mostly quite constructed still life images and I really like thinking of ideas for objects and products. Mostly I work in the field, in the commercial field and um, for me it's like really interesting to start with, really like with a sketch, uh, first idea and uh, that I develop into a sketch where I really start to define the colors, the materials, the backgrounds and also aspects of an image and in a further process I build that image, I do the set design and uh, organize the materials and everything and uh, yeah, in the final stage I'm photographing it. So probably you call that an yeah, art director, set designer and a photographer and I kind of merge all these fields uh, with my work and just to give you like an idea um, of uh, how that looks like I will show now shortly two projects um, so, yeah, of course, the best assignments are the ones where you have complete freedom. And um, I, I had this assignment just to shoot the three fur and leather bags for Nina Ritchie. And uh, somehow I was like a little bit, yeah, it was a bit strange when I received the images and I was like, I can still see the origin of them. So I thought maybe I want to bring them back to their living space they've once lived in. And um, after doing some research about terrariums and zoos, uh, animal shops, I thought yeah, maybe I better have to build on my own, like to make really custom-made uh, terrariums for each bag. So after watching some YouTube tutorials, I started to build uh, these. Um, so you need like stereo and plaster and decorating with breathing holes. Uh, and these were the final images, so for each bag, uh, custom-made terrarium, which is like, of course, referring a little bit to the consumer's world we live in, kind of a fake, uh, pro like a product in, in this world. So this was kind of a yeah, quite complex set design and uh, step from the product to the final image is quite uh, drastic. Uh, but of course, sometimes also just like a simple white plain background is enough to show an idea best. And that was a project that called Sweet Dreams, uh, which I created for a Dutch magazine called MacGuffin, and they had a special issue about bats, and um, asked me to come up with like an idea to shoot mattresses. And probably you know all these like cutted mattress samples that you can see in yeah bed stores or mattress stores, where you have like all these layers. And yeah, the more I looked at them, somehow they reminded me like on cutted piece of cake. Uh, so, yeah, that was actually the idea. Um, I created this series called Sweet Dreams, which is like a mix of um, mattress samples and similar looking cutted piece of cakes. Um, and it's not actually only showing the similarity between these objects, but also, of course, like the, you know, the psychological relationship between eating and sleeping which is something quite essential we all need in life, but sometimes too much cake or too much sleep is not good. Um, and uh, yeah, but just this now showing an idea very simple and once you need a very complex set to show the best, sometimes very reduced and sometimes you need a very specific location um, to show an idea best. And um, yeah, I, I probably know Süddeutsche Zeitung magazine, it's Germany's largest magazine. It appears weekly and I quite often work for them because they give me a lot of freedom and uh, so here they just sent me like a list of certain themes and topic uh, which they needed to cover like uh, accessories, beauty, uh, fragrance and yeah one of them was like down jackets and I kind of like this like weird like functional object like mattresses, down jackets and um, yeah, it's like next to all fashionable aspects, it's like a very uh, functional object and uh, it's there to protect the body, it's in even cold areas to keep your body warm. And I had to think back, uh, being a child, uh, wearing this jacket and building snowman. 
and then dress them like with scarf and carrot nose. And um, yeah, then I thought, yeah, why not building snowmen as models and dress them in winter wear? But then like to create like different kind of characters uh, so that everyone has its own story, like the happy one, the sporty, and the uh, explorer. And uh, yeah, after I posed that idea to a sad magazine, I didn't heard back from them for a while, so I thought maybe it was <laughs> too weird. Um, <laughs> But then, uh, luckily, I received an email from the art director, Beatrice Steinbeck, and she said, yeah, they really like it, and we can produce it. And I was really happy. Uh, but she said, yeah, but the story has to, be, it has to appear in the November issue, so you have to shoot in September. And I was like, yeah, but snow? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, but actually, luckily, there's the Hintertuxe Glacier in Austria which is also accessible during the late summer times. But you have to go on top, of course. And um, I've only been on a glacier to go for skiing as a kid, which is ages ago, but never to build snowman, and especially not to spend a couple of hours on top, because usually you drive up in a lift and then you ski down. So you don't really experience the weather conditions up there. And I was like, OK, but OK, let's do it. Um, so I want to be extra safe and uh, yeah, with a, like a fully equipped car. And of course, I didn't went by my own. I went with stylist Yvonne Vigger and two assistants. We drove like all the way from Munich, where the Asset magazine's headquarters is, to Hintertux. Um, yeah, and once we arrived there, uh, we took over the whole breakfast room because luckily we're the only guests. Um, and defined each outfit's uh, for the snowman, we had to pack smart because going on a glacier means you can't take a crazy amount of stuff with it. So we really defined, okay, this outfit's for that snowman, and we packed each uh, outfit in a bag. And then the next morning, on the way to the gondola, we got stuck in a first classic Alp traffic jam, <laughs> which led directly to the next one, as apparently we weren't the only people going on a glacier. Uh, with the difference that our mission was to build snowmen. And um, yeah, the higher we got, uh, the more snow appeared, and the landscape uh, literally transformed into winter wonderland. And then suddenly, we found us back on 3,250 meters at about minus 20 degrees. Yeah, that's also what I thought. And actually, building a snowman up there is a little bit different as you might do it in your foregarden or in a park. Uh, the conditions drastically changed, and uh, yeah, it's very cold. The light is, is extremely bright. I had uh, two weeks eye pain after that, because sometimes I took off my glasses. Uh, it's windy, and being four hours in such a height also means like a lack of oxygen, which makes you feel dizzy. Um, but you kind of have to ignore all these problems or aspects and because the schedule is tight and we only had a few hours uh, per day on the glacier, so we really had to rush, rush because the gondolas only went, went to certain hours up and down um, and not much time seeing of problems, um, which wasn't easy because we constantly had to find solution and the first Soulman test looked pretty sad. And um, the snow was like super powdery and it was not possible at all to build snowman from them. And I panicked a bit and I thought, oh yeah, maybe we should shoot them all like from top uh, and change the concept and they all lie. Uh, but apparently there was also the really frozen parts which were actually better in the end. So, and this was the only way to cut it. So, um, after a while, like I had this like little smasher, uh, and after a while, we found good techniques um, in order to uh, yeah smilt, build the snowman efficient. And uh, we always had this suitcase with, with us, which was quite important because there were all equipment in it uh, that you need to build a snowman on a glacier, like uh, stiffing material for the bodies, carrot noses, of course. Uh, mouse dots, uh, eyes, beards, um, yeah, and all the kind of stuff. And actually, the good thing about snow models is that they never complain. Um, they they never freeze, uh, so that was nice. Um, yeah, and we had a lot of fun. 
And uh, yeah, this was the last probably most uh, dramatic picture. Um, we had about 30 minutes left until the last gondola went down and we also were the last people there because it was so foggy that nobody went skiing there uh, except us building a snowman. And uh, just to get an idea where we are at that moment, um, so this is the glacier, this is where we were and here it went like a few thousand meters straight down and this is where the snowman had to stand. And um, after finally like setting him up, it suddenly became super windy, stormy, foggy, snowy, and of course, like the most dramatic thing happened. The explorer, he fell down, he lost his head. <laughs> um, so we had to fix him on a leash. Uh, Ivan is holding him on a leash. So it was a quite dramatic ending, but um, we managed, we managed uh, to, to, to go down. Uh, and uh, after that experience, I thought maybe that's how Reinhold Messner must feel after exploring uh, the Mount Everest. Um, but now I'd like to introduce you to all the snow people and after spending so much time with them, I even gave them uh, names. So this is Reinhold, um, Mariana, Franz, he unfortunately had an accident, <laughs> Annette, Rainer, and Victor and Olga. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, it's a difference building snowmen up there and I really like to explore different materials and really dig into certain topics that I haven't touched before, like building a terrarium or a snowman. And after arriving back at the Amsterdam airport, I suddenly start to <laughs> see strange things. <laughs> So yeah, thank you for attention and have a nice evening. <laughs>